and we're gonna get into some growing with my buds. So we got the monster plant going. Well, Dan gets us going. I'll go fetch it quickly. But um, this week's topic is about what you can do for arid soils. The reason I bring this up is it turns out that the biggest farmers and cannabis growers stateside, most of the money that they're putting into yeah, research, uh, oh yeah, cool, yeah, it's on the roof there. Uh, most of the money that they're putting into research, they're putting it into soil research. Mm. But not just like adding shit to soil, soil preservation. Because mm. once something's out, it's gone. Mm. Oh, he has that baby. Hey. Is this the this one? Which yeah, one? That's Dope Rogan, bro. Yeah, Dope, Dope Rogan. Dope yeah. Rogan. There he is. <laughs> Dope Rogan. He's doing pretty good, eh? Fucking hell. Yeah, looks slacker. She. 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 Stop, stop she. Yes, you're she. very correct. No, who are we? Who are we? How <laughs> dare you? But now, so these actually are saying what yeah. they're trying to do is preserve the soil, preserve the life in it, the vibes, the environment. But now, what can you do to preserve that? Then, let's say you got some, you got some grunt. It's not the greatest, mm. but you want to keep the life that's in there going and help it. What can you do to help the life there, practically in an arid? tough region because let's face it africa it's not all loamy soil it could be a lot of clay a lot of sandy soil a lot of well, arid shit yeah, what you would start to do is you would start to amend the soil with your the stuff that you have around you and obviously you don't have to go buy expensive stuff you can start with cardboard newspapers and start oh. making say like layers of cardboard and different leaves and you know create a bit of a more of a thicker compost or humus compost that you could then mix with your arid soils or your dry soils or whatever it might be. But you need to add things in that you can make at home. So like worm castings would help big time. Um, if you don't want to buy things, if you want to make it yourself, worm castings, uh, follow the KNF route of things. <laughs> Come back to the KNF things. Korean natural farming will make any soil that is literally barren into a thriving, very flush, fl flourishing, nu nutrient rich area. Yeah. Now this is also one of those things that takes input to make output you will have to start somewhere it'll take time like dan says a bit of a compost a bit of a worm castings and things like that you can do the labs the knf and all that but what they're also trying to do now is they're saying they put all this time into getting it there they're trying to now preserve this because now it is there but you are taking a lot out by growing what about things like mulching mulching is good there's so they're talking about basically not to, not to till, so no till growing basically is the best way that they are trying to do is preserving your microorganisms below the surface. So you're trying to create that environment below where there's lots of life and all that you do is you feed the life underground to, to survive, keep it surviving, keep it doing what it needs to do. So in order to not kill it, you can't do certain things like tilling. If you till and you open up the soil and the sun is shining directly onto the soil, that sun will kill off the microbes because they're so delicate and they can be destroyed by the UV rays and all that. It literally fries them up. So no-till farming is a good place to start. And then to benefit that will help that more is to mulch, like you're saying. Put a mulch on top or grow cover crops on top of that that allow more bacteria and natural microbes to live within that area and not be excluded. Like when you do hydroponically, you do exclude most of them. You still do have some, but you exclude a lot of it. You know, you're going into a sterile medium that is mm. basically just cocoa or hot rock wool or stone mm. or water or air. Yeah. It's plain. It's just rice. There ain't no flavor. This is full of <laughs> millions and millions and millions of microbes, nematodes, all sorts of things. So if you take a teaspoon of soil out of, of in your garden, you've got 10 billion microbes. Well, Dan said a, a thing that he's touching on a topic is inoculation. This is something, so I've done the KNF thing a bit and I'm looking forward to doing it this summer with you. Actually, I really am a lot. Um, but what I've picked up is that when you see a good piece of soil or somewhere where life is thriving, even if it's in a bush where it's just vigorous, you are able to grab a bit of that soil or create a situation with IMO, with rice and that, where you can harvest the good things that are growing there and inject them into your new situation and that life will then thrive. Mm -hmm. So when it does come to injecting and preserving, I know 
anti-vaxxers. I'm not saying fucking vaccinate you yeah, It's not injecting, it's, it's this input. That yeah, got. it's this input. It's Infusing. like the mother culture when it comes to yeah. dough and all kinds of things. Yes. The mother compost, anywhere you see life, there's fucking life. You can grab a bit of it for free, I promise you. Maybe it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Not all of it though. No, it'll carry on, eh? But now, something that was interesting is that Cape Town was practically an arid area not so long ago. Fair enough, yeah. were there, what were people doing to cope with the dryness? Because you've got to water the plants still. Were there any hacks? Were oaks using their bath water? <laughs> yeah, there were. I, I think there were quite a lot of hacks that we have. Um, for most of us that were running hydro systems at that time, you had to shut down. You know, we had to switch over to soil. Most of us had to switch over to normal mic like like the systems he's talking about micro based systems we couldn't run hydro based systems we couldn't feed all the time so you had to have a soil which could dry out longer it could take it more so we couldn't run cocoa based soils and stuff i switched to stuff at that time which was like freedom farms classic based stuff we didn't have that much choice down there at yeah. that time as well um, <clears throat> but i mean for the best part as well bath water using your bath like if you have a garden, yeah, you know, sure. If you if you're growing in a garden, I guess you can use your bath water and that stuff. I've never used bath water in a hydro system, so I can't really comment on yeah, yeah. if I if if I if I would have <coughs> taken like my head and shoulders and chucked it in. Yeah, your soaps. Do you think your soaps like, yeah, are gonna help? Like yeah, like like, exactly. like 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 running through there. I'm not sure. I, what it will do is make a good surf surfacant, which will then make it stick. A wetting yeah. agent, the yes. surfacant. I'd, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd love to hear like what the extent would be of using your grey water for your hydroponic system yeah. as well, you know, because... That well, depends what soap you're going to use. Well, if body. guys are doing the hydro solid, the, the hydro like cropper, and they're using RO, and they have an RO filter, yeah. then they can do it. They just suck yeah. it out of a tank. shower water, how, how about that? I think you could probably use... It's grey water. Grey yeah. Water, yeah. Just, I don't know about just, going, because see, when you're going through a hydro system and you're putting in your nutrients into that chemicals, yeah. there's could be from whatever soaps you use and yeah. whatever you use in yeah. the shower can affect that. So I wouldn't really could use it for a hydro it. system, but for yeah, yeah. just, all your just for feeding the garden, yeah. go for it. Yeah, I'm fine. feeding your straight pot. And yeah, um, soil, go for it. Bitchy yeah. head and shoulders, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I just want your plant to taste like fucking dove. But use the right soap. Smell like so fresh. <laughs> Sunlight some, and water. Okay. Get some decent soap. Get the cannabis art. Yeah. So, yeah. so there's two thoughts that come to mind on this. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe some oaks use the runoff for their bong water. Ooh. And their cup of coffee. Yes. <laughs> In their cup of that coffee. That is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so what was that word you used to explain surface tension in water? The, what, the su surficant. Surficant. The surficant. But that, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Dan was saying, so what happens is when you apply um, like a spray or even a, a nutrient and things, but particularly when you spray oh, things yeah. on plants, mm -hmm. water has a tension that makes it form a drop and that drop still has weight and it will run off the surface of your plant. But if you're able to break that up, even when you spray, you think you're spraying, it still forms a drop that will run off the plant. You want something to stay there. You would use a surfacant, a wetting agent to make that form smaller drops. Mm -hmm. It makes it stick. Stick. So you want to make smaller drops with your nozzle to make it yeah. finer, because the finer that it is, the easier for the stomata to absorb it, obviously. Mm. Yeah. Because if you make it very fine, it makes them, they can literally pull it in. So a mist yeah. would be the best compared to, you throw a bucket of water, it's not going to do shit. Yeah. yeah you really want it to be very fine. So those pump-up things are really great. They have yeah. to be pumped, and they're really got to be cleaned every time you use it. And as long as you're using a bit of a surfacant, but it's simple as using like... Um, well, fulvic or soap. To drop the soap. Literally a to clean drop it. of soap in your spray bottle or like a quarter teaspoon of soap. Not even, like two drops. A little bit. Yeah. Such a small amount. And that allows it to, when you spray, you'll see it won't just run off. It sticks. And your leaf stays wet. So then the plant has time to absorb what you've given it and not just running off and then it's like it's just Making running the down <laughs> yeah. the, if i were to put an analogy on this imagine you're the plant and you're trying you're thirsty as fuck but you're having to stand in the rain trying to drink and it's all these little drops little drops you're not getting enough because it's all just missing 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 but the moment you add that surfing into it it becomes a tap and things become a lot more accessible that's when you do your ipm well, the IPM works generally without it. You shouldn't have to. It can just spray it normally because you don't want to mess with yeah. those living microbes that you have inside them if you're using a good IPM schedule. Yeah. But when you're doing, say, 
Kelpak, for instance, yeah. or if you're using a like poison. <laughs> If you are going to be using a poison of any kind, if you had to use something, like if you had spider mice and you decided to use red spider side, yeah. you'd have to use it because you don't want to just spray it and waste it. You want it to be very effective, and it has to be effective then. So, yeah. yeah. So it's also good for when you make acid rain on the spider mm -hmm. mice. Yucca is good, apparently. Yucca is a Yucca. great surfactant, yeah. So, yucca aloe, basically. Okay. Aloe. Aloe. Okay. I keep hearing, I think this may also be the season of aloe. There are so many things I want to do with aloe. Hey? You can clone with aloe, you can you add aloe to your mix and it just helps the plant really yeah. it thrives. The plant really exactly. loves aloe, yeah. 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 As a soil drain show a folio. Yeah. 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 Both. It's both. It's both. When you do a folio obviously you have to you take the aloe and you have to blend it. Yeah. I was gonna you have to ask, blend it like completely, and then you, then you strain it. Like stringy yeah. snot then you just like strain that yeah. snot and then that stuff that comes out you can use that as a folio. It helps with your phone ring to stick anything to anything really. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, I've it's actually a been See how much shit I'm learning. Yeah, you can take it night. as a cloner, so you take a piece of aloe, you cut it and you stick the, your clone into it and yeah. you can leave it there for, and so you can use it as cloning gel basically. Okay. And will the roots start growing out of that piece of aloe then? Or? No, you take it out. No, you take it out. Yeah, you take it out. Yeah. You just uh, expose it for long. Okay. So you can okay. leave it there for like a couple of yeah, hours yeah, and yeah. it sits inside. It's yeah. great. Yeah. It'll absorb all the... I'm you kind of like prep it to get it ready for your cytokines, everything yeah, into it, and then when you take it out and put it into the rock wall. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay, I get that. Yeah. We should, I think. Do you know what we should do? It, I'm trying not to be bossy, buzz, because I want to be buzz, not boss. I boss. keep saying lately to a lot of people. <laughs> boss. It's, it's maybe it would be good to do a clonix versus Elo shootout in the near future on the show. Hey, okay. put clonix. Well, we Clonix put is six no longer. Clonix I've, got, no I've got a bottle of Clonix. Oh, okay, that's cool. Jeez, you lucky. Okay. Mm. Yeah, the mm. our stuff still will be Clonix, Dinah Root. Yeah, Dinah Root. No, no, no these are no. one simple thing. You go, no, man, you got to do a no, full on so shootout. Okay. What are you talking about? Do you want to okay. just go uh, old school we, versus Elo? And, <laughs> and can we try honey as well? Honey as well. Uh, Apparently, honey, yeah. yeah. This is this is what's happened. This is why I got a bit burnt out last year with this shit. Is every time I I feel like we've got a good idea, and we should do it. These oaks all come and they put the baby in me, and they hit the road, and I'm like that oak in a, "Don't be a menace." Like, am I your daddy with all these plants around me, feeling like a single mom up in here with ten jobs? Uh, so we'll do it. We'll do it. Thank you. Honey, Dino root, Clonex, aloe. Sheesh. And spit. And yes. spit. Honestly. Okay. Come okay, on, Oaks. Put your mouth in there and then stick it in the clothes. Yeah. And then, sure. We'll figure it out. But we're going to have to do a deal with all your mofos. So I'm going to pull body. up my socks, ne? But you're going to pull up your socks. Because Shaul had a good idea. We're going to talk about that later. Yes. Guys, please like, share, subscribe. Please remember this week's Zol poll. Should we be allowed at work? Yes, yeah. nope. Depends on the job. Remember, tag us in Insta your gram. Yes. We are officially migrating to that vibe going forward. Yes. And commentation for your oaks who are leaving the clever comments afterwards. Please and thank you. Any more shout outs before we get on to thanking the affiliates and Insta your gram and all that? Yeah, Austin Ramsey Lewis is on uh, watching us on Facebook. Fly. Facebook. Facebook. Jesus Facebook. Sorry, English the is my favorite friend right now. <laughs> Flyman is watching. Um, I nearly said myself because I've been commenting on there. Leonard van der Merwe, Luna Ripple, uh, Dean Till, we've mentioned you, Kent Everson. Shippa, it's like. We've got 17 people watching us live on the Facebooks right now. Lekker. I wear Chris just bought five shirts. <laughs> I wear. Chris just bought five shirts. Yeah, I just placed the order for five good people's best shirts. I can't wait until it arrives. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. They are awesome shirts. Sacred yeah. Team such an amazing supporter. I Check, Dale's repping so the shirt. Yeah. Yellow it's Man like is that. saying you're cockstone. I am Cuckstone. Yellow man. She's like, Joe is Cuckstone. <laughs> Joe is Cuckstone. <laughs> Yellow <laughs> man. We're going to have to call... Do you know, I see you. We're going to have to call one of these knuckle strains load shedding the way we're all fucking talking a bit slower tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so so what, I wonder what's the deal with this before we end. When, when are we putting this out? So... I've been keeping it on my desk at night under a light and then each day giving it a bit of light. But she's growing nicely. Yeah, I didn't want it to, to burn to shit. But it's growing and I think it needs to get mostly sunlight now. But I don't want to put it out all the way because if I put it out, I think it'll flower. I think if I put it out now in the sun on its own, it'll flower. No, what yeah. you're doing is good because this was a clone. So it was obviously under 18 hours. 
So that means that you uh, you bring it slowly back into what you know it naturally is outside. But we need to get a big pot now. Well, we have to go dig a big hole, a meter by meter squared. Well, guys, I'm going past Green Thumb Hydro tomorrow or sometime. So I'll go hook all that shit up or get some Freedom Farms up in here, some bio. I know Oaks are probably going to line up to help us feed this baby. So this is going to be fun, but it is time to put a little bit more juice into it. Because I do think I want it to be big. Dan, how big must it be before we put it outside? As big, big as you bloody well can. <laughs> Tall as me. As tall as you. Yeah. Yo, Oaks. Well, yeah, what, do, you want, do you want to grow the biggest, uh -huh. smallest plant? <laughs> you want to grow the biggest, biggest, <laughs> biggest fucking plant. plant. This is the triple story, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can get a triple story one. now, eh? Double story. Double story, alright, to begin, Oaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can get a ladder up in there. So